discoverer of the structure of DNA for which he won a Nobel Prize. And I, and I mentioned one astonishing fact about Francis Crick, which he admitted shortly before his death in 2004, uh, which is that uh, he was under the influence of a hallucinogen, under the influence of LSD, when he first saw the double helix structure of DNA. So this vision, this teaching came to him uh, in an altered state of consciousness. Now, later in his life, in fact, in the 1980s, this Nobel Prize winner, Francis Crick, published an extraordinary book called Life Itself, uh, in which he argues from a scientific point of view that life, uh, the DNA molecule, which is the essence of life, could not have got started by accident on this planet. He didn't believe it could. He compared it to, he said it's about as likely that, you, you know this idea of the primeval soup and molecules accidentally bumping against each other, producing life, which so many of our scientists mm -hmm. like? Sure. Crick compared that to, he thought that was about as likely uh, as, the assembly, as the assembly of a fully functioning jumbo jet by a hurricane in a junkyard. Uh, it is just such an extraordinarily complicated molecule, the DNA molecule, and its relationship to the protein uh, equally complicated. So to cut a long story short, he suggested it was sent here by an alien civilization from the other side of the universe uh, who faced certain doom. by chance he was right and we can't dismiss that the man won a Nobel Prize after all for the study of DNA then we have to consider another possibility which is that that supposed civilization on the other side of the galaxy that sent DNA to this planet may have genetically engineered that DNA it's recently been discovered that DNA is a fantastic recording medium are being taken out all over the world to use DNA as a recording device, uh, that it would be possible to record vast quantities of information on DNA. Right now, today, our scientists can record 100-word songs on DNA, and it's been done on the DNA of the E. coli bacteria. But the evidence suggests that its storage capacity is limitless, perhaps even enough to record the entire knowledge of a civilization. So that's the idea that maybe on so-called junk DNA, which is 97% of our DNA, only 3% of our DNA is involved in genes. The rest we don't know what it does, and, it, and the scientists call it junk DNA. Maybe that contains and has contained since the beginning of evolution recorded messages, interactive recorded information from our makers waiting for the evolution of a creature that would be able to understand those messages and decode them. And the suggestion is that creature is us and the decoding method is altered states of consciousness. Thank you. 
We need to take control again of our own consciousness. If we do not own and control our own consciousness, then we own nothing.